Moussa Ibrahim in Tripoli, welcome to Hard Talk. Hi, Stephen. Let me start with the military situation, in particular in the city of Misrata. Can you tell me what exactly is the intention of Colonel Gaddafi's forces in Misrata? Well, the story is very simple. Um, groups of armed rebels uh, took up arms and occupied the city of Masrata, terrorizing people, raping women, killing children, burning up buildings. And our army is trying to liberate the city, just as it did with Zawiya, with Zintan, with Tripoli, with Sirman, with Sobrata, and other places. In doing so, it's following the international agreements on war. It's a, a traditional, well-trained army. And the people of Masrata are helping us liberate their own city. Uh, what the international community is hearing about Masrata is misinformation. The rebels are the outlaws. They are the ones who affiliate themselves with Al-Qaeda, as has been proven by many statements made by Al-Qaeda itself. And we are on the side of our people liberating our city street by street. How many civilians are your forces prepared to kill to achieve what you describe as this liberation? Our uh, forces uh, are composed of Libyan uh, tribes. The Libyan tribes will never kill Libyan civilians because these civilians are the children of these very tribes. These uh, armed rebels are the ones who are prepared to kill civilians. Of course, there might have been some civilian casualties uh, due because the fight uh, uh, takes place in the streets of Masrata as it uh, took place in the streets of Azawiya and Tripoli before. Yeah, let, let, let me stop, let me stop you there, if, will I, never, if I may. will never target children. Uh, right, well, let, let's just unpick that a little bit. Of course, you don't live in Misrata. There are many people who do live in Misrata, who have been explaining precisely what the situation is. Uh, for example, doctors at the hospital there have said that more than 250 people, including children and including women, have been killed in the last six weeks of fighting. They clearly believe that those people have been killed by Gaddafi's forces. They live there, you don't. Absolutely not. Uh, misinformation is the main mark of this war in Libya. We have asked again and again for two months now that international organizations, fact-finding missions, international observers to come through the doors of Tripoli and judge our action on the ground. No one cared to answer our call positively. Instead, they are dealing with the rebels and the areas controlled by the rebels, and they are believing the reports are conducted by the rebels. First of all, Stephen, the hospital of Musrata is out of work, out of service for two years now. The doctors there are part of the rebels group who are trying to give a bad image for Musrata to allow NATO to occupy the city under the humanitarian aid uh, pretext. Yes, the, uh, I the, challenge the, yeah, hang, hang, hang on, hang on. I, 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 don't want to, yeah, I don't want to leave our audience confused. You say the main hospital is closed. The fact is that there is at least one clinic operating where many of the dead and wounded have been taken. And we know from the words of doctors who work in those hospitals that, for example, only yesterday, 17 dead bodies were taken to that institution. Uh, one young girl was shot dead a bullet in the head. This is the reality they are dealing with every day. Of course, Stephen, you will see people shot in the head and killed, and they look civilian, but they are not. You have to remember that we are not fighting a traditional army. You, you think we this little girl, this, 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 this li little clothing. girl who had a bullet in the head, was she, was she, what the, but the little girl that we you referred have, to in the well, question, was she, as, was she a military As combatant? I said before, Okay, I will give you a very simple and powerful answer to that. We are, the, not the, we are not the only party who has arms in Masrata. We said to the international community, you have a little girl with a bullet in the head in Masrata. Why do you assume it's the army who killed the girl? There are hundreds of other 
people who have arms in Misrata, and it's in their benefit to have NATO invading and occupying Misrata. It's in their benefit to have little girls shot dead, not in the benefit of the army. We have asked the United Nations officially, we have asked human rights officially, Amnesty International officially, to come from our side and observe the actions of our army. Do you know what the answer, Stephen? No, no one wants to come and investigate. People want to remain re reliant on media reports. Now, media reports are not worth anything in any court of law. Come judge us with experts on the ground. If I take you to Musrata, Stephen, you will not be able to decide how this girl was killed, what kind of bullet, where was she killed, how All long right. ago, what kind of ammunition. An expert, Mr. Stephen, an expert, will be able to do that and might decide indeed that the rebels are the ones who killed her. Yeah. Why is it that the international well, community does not want to help us decide the truth? Well, Mr. Ibrahim, you raised an interesting point there. You talk about your desire to see Amnesty International and other groups uh, pursuing human rights on the ground in Misrata. Of course, they have been on the ground. Amnesty International's Donatella Rivera says that she found, quote, from the, from se several, the rebel side, several Stephen, bomblets from the rebel and canisters side. all over the center of town indicating the use of cluster bombs. Human Rights Watch also found clear evidence of mortar shells which were cluster projectiles made in Spain. They're called the MA MAT-120 millimeter projectile. They use 21 little bomblets. The fragments go all over the place. And Human Rights Watch's Steve Goose said the use of these munitions is appalling. It poses a huge risk to civilians. That is reporting done by human rights groups on the ground in Misrata. Can I answer that, Stephen? Can I answer that? I have uh, called upon Human Rights Watch and other organizations for weeks now. I said to them, you are under the control of the rebels. You are seeing what the rebels are presenting to you within the areas they control. They can, and they indeed do, fabricate stories. They have people collaborating with them. They have very highly trained experts from Qatar, from Afghanistan, from Yemen, Iraq, and Egypt helping them fabricate these stories. We say to them, why are you listening to one party? Come to listen to the story from the other side. We are the legitimate government of this country. We can never kill our civilian population because of the very structure of the Libyan army, which is made of Libyan tribes, who will not kill the kids of Libyan tribes. You, um... As for the use of power in Misrata, of course, of course we use power in Misrata uh, from our defensive positions to defend our city, to defend our population. And the proof, we have taken, evacuated tens of thousands of the inhabitants of Musrata. They now live in Zlitan city, in uh, al khumis city, and in Tripoli city, under the full protection of the Libyan army and the Libyan authorities. These people, if you meet them, they will give you horror stories about rape, about murder, about torture by the rebels. Why is it that Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, are not reporting these stories from the other cities surrounding Musrata? Yeah, we, 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 we know, Mr. Ibrahim, we, we, we know that there are up to a thousand or more people who are currently missing, having, having been taken by your forces from in and around Misrata. Nobody appears now, to know now where those people... Now, how do you know that? How do you nobody, know... We would... That is a report, again, from Amnesty International, see, who have spoken to people on the ground in the city of Misrata. And I repeat, you are nowhere near Misrata. You sit in Tripoli. Let me give you an argument. And I'm going to allow you, Amnesty International and the Human Rights Watch and the UN, to beat. We invited all of these people two months ago, officially, again, time and again, to come investigate our prisons, investigate our army, investigate our officials, investigate our war, investigate every single Libyan city. My question, I would like you to answer, why haven't they come? Why are they relying on media reports and the side of the rebels? This is a question that is the most powerful in the whole story. Yeah. Why well, is it? We open Ibrahim, our you, doors you and seem no to be ignoring to to You seem to be ignoring my point that they already are there. They found their way into Misrata 
without going through your particular controls. That, that is the point. But let's move on for a moment. There, Steve, may, be, there, may, be another, there may be another problem here. It may be a credibility problem. It may be that over the last few weeks, we've heard you time and again promise that humanitarian access will be given to Misrata over the land, which, of course, you've blocked for more than four weeks. It may be also that we've seen you and Mr. Gaddafi, your boss, pledge various times ceasefires every one of which has not been kept that may be the fundamental well, credibility that's, that's not true Stephen uh, uh, look at what we did with the Red Cross for example the Red Cross came two days ago we collaborated with them fully they praised our collaboration they opened an office in Tripoli and they visited Musrata already twice and they are intensifying their operation in Musrata with the help of the Libyan government the UN they came only yesterday, after weeks of, of inviting them, uh, the uh, Office for the Coordination of a human, uh, Humanitarian Affairs. We fully collaborated with them. We signed an agreement with them, and they have started their work with the help of the Libyan government. So are, are, I you, go, are you going to, to open up? I that okay. did not help any well, organization. That, that, that's an interesting and important point. Are you now going to open up land corridors into the middle of Misrata, right into oh. the port area, and are you going to allow a UN operation to set up an operation Stephen, inside the city? Stephen, come on. No one proved us as lying whatsoever because no one challenged, no one tested our statements. No one came until two days ago when the Red Cross came and yesterday when the UN came. Of course, we are opening uh, every possible way to Musrata to help bring humanitarian aid. But you have to remember, we are the legitimate side fighting an armed rebellion. If you had armed gangs in London or Manchester occupying your city, you will fight against them with full power to liberate the streets of your city. This is not a political movement for democratic change. This is an armed rebellion to gain power and wealth in Libya. We are the people who want to change in Libya. I joined uh, a, a long political process a, a year ago in Libya to uh, have a written constitution in Libya, to have freedom of the press in Libya, to have a transparent political system. We actually were doing quite well, and we do feel that the armed rebellion robbed us of our peaceful chance to change peacefully and from within Libya. Now, well, we have I, I, NATO, we have international agendas against Libya, we have people trying to steal our oil, we have the Iraqi scenario yeah, yeah, being all right. implemented well, look, in Libya we'll in front of our eyes. All right, we'll try and explore your notion that uh, a, a serious reform effort was in train I in a moment. But before we get there, I just want to establish a couple of simple things. And keep your answers short, if, if you would. First simple thing is this. Does Colonel, does Colonel Gaddafi understand that there will be no end to the international pressure, military, economic, political, until he leaves power. Does he understand that? Well, how about this, Stephen? Why doesn't the international community understand that uh, they could easily end this by allowing the Libyan people to decide for themselves freely the type of political system and the leadership they want? We accepted the African Union initiative that says just that while the international community or NATO preconditioned this initiative by asking the leader to step down. We are saying, who are you to precondition the Libyan of choice? We say we accept elections, referendum, a uh, transitional period, under the supervision of the UN, under the supervision of the African yeah, Union and the yeah, European with, Union, with respect, and Mr. let Ibrahim, the Libyan population change. You're not addressing my question, which is, does Gaddafi understand that now there is no option as far as the international community is concerned, and this isn't just Obama, Cameron, and Sarkozy. It's also the Arab League. It's also actually chiefs of the African Union, who whom I've spoken Stephen, to. And all of them say they? that it's inconceivable <laughs> now that there can be stability and reform in Libya until Gaddafi goes, and he must go. Stephen, Stephen, who are they? You can enlarge your list to include every single one that is not Libyan. Who are they to decide the future of Libyans? The Libyan people, the six million Libyan populations, are the ones who have the right to decide their future. Not God, not Cameron, not anyone else, not Obama, not anyone, not the Arab League, the Libyan people. If the Libyan people want their dictator, if they love their killer and their... It's their choice. Let